Alrighty. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on YouTube. My name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media, and we are live right now with a very special morning here because we have chambered Nautilus back here at the aquarium in our tentacles special exhibition. It's been a little while since we've had some Nautilus here at the aquarium, so we're very excited to share these all with you. And good morning, Subnautica guy. Thanks for being there. Now, chambered Nautilus that you're looking at right here, these are, hey, Spider Prime, thanks for tuning in. These are representatives of an ancient type of cephalopod. Those are head-footed animals like squid, octopuses, cuttlefish, and nautiluses right here, rounded out for the types of cephalopods that we have out there in the wild still. And these particular animals, they are survivors. They've been around for half a billion years on the planet, 500 million years virtually unchanged as this shelled type of cephalopod. Now they're survivors because there used to be tens of thousands of species of shelled cephalopod kicking out there in the ocean. They were outcompeted by fish. There were mass extinctions that occurred that knocked out a lot. Oh, we got one swimming right here that knocked out the rest of those shelled cephalopods. But you may be familiar, you might even have one of these fossils at home. Ammonites are one of those types of shelled cephalopod where the coil is on the outside. And at the end of that coil would have been the tentacles of one of these head-footed animals, these cephalopods here. You can see it, that same body type design here with these chambered nautiluses. The coil on the chambered nautilus is more visible on the inside, but you can see here at the front where those 90 plus tentacles are and that eye looking right at you, that pinhole camera eye, and then that head shield up top. That is the animal there in that front part of the chamber at the end of the coil. And uh, not every one of those shelled cephalopods had coils. Some of them were very uh, pointy. Uh, others had crazy bifurcations and branches. But this particular type of shelled cephalopod is apparently the winning strategy. Not only does their reproductive strategy allow them to be able to uh, survive in the deep instead of having to deal with larvae near the surface, which is what's thought to have happened to the ammonites, um, but they also live in an area of the deep sea that changes very, very slowly. And so that's how you're able to have an animal that's been around almost unchanged for half a billion years here on the planet. Now, they're having some issues surviving Let's see, is the Nautilus exhibit back open at the aquarium? Yeah, we're live right now, Larissa, at that exhibit. You can see we have some of our staff here that are taking a close look. We haven't seen the Nautiluses here in a while. So we are almost open here to the public. Uh, just about maybe five minutes from now, people will be able to come and take a look here for themselves. So these Nautilus, they are here as a part of a special relationship between the Monterey Bay Aquarium and researchers in Fiji. Dr. Greg Barode uh, with National Geographic is out there studying these Nautilus and they've discovered that that population out there in Fiji is a little bit more robust than other places. And what we're trying to do is establish better uh, rules and regulations to help protect these animals there in the wild because one of the few places you're likely to see these shells outside of at the aquarium with these live animals is in the curiosity trade. People are catching these animals to be able to have their shells and sell them. Now that's a problem because these animals here live a very long amount of time compared to other uh, cephalopods. They can live 20 plus years. They grow very slowly and they reproduce very slowly. And so what we're doing here at the aquarium is trying to figure out how to grow them in a zoo or aquarium setting, which would allow us to relieve pressure on that wild population. We've had some success with these animals laying eggs at the aquarium and we're working on we're working on seeing if we can hatch them and raise them up to adulthood. You can see one of them swimming right now with that shell being used as that buoyancy device there on the back. You can see it bobbing up and down. That's as the siphon is pushing water out from inside the shell cavity out to the world. Oh, and I love how the white balance just changed here on the camera as we got down lower. You can see a little bit more of those reds there on those Nautilus now, beautiful. 
And uh, so yeah, they w they're being harvested for their shells, which is a big problem. That population can't really sustain it. And so Dr. Greg Barode is working to make sure that there are stronger environmental regulations. And here at the aquarium, these animals are here as part of ongoing education in the scientific permits and also for that breeding program to see if we can uh, help relieve that pressure on those wild populations. Oh, and if you're wondering how it is that jellyfish mate, I know it looks sort of similar to jellyfish. Uh, jellies tend to have males and females that reproduce, and I believe it's the same thing here with these nautiluses, with the males and the females. You'll see them mating face to face uh, when they get ready to try to have that next generation, but those eggs were, will develop for a very long time. So again, we're doing 12 to 14 months, 12 to 14 months there. We got Emily on the backup brain here for the live stream. Great, so with that everyone, we are almost open. I wanna make sure that we wrap it up here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but we're very excited to have these Nautiluses here at the aquarium for you folks. Make sure to come on down if you can or share this broadcast with your friends. Let them know that Nautiluses are back here at the aquarium as a part of that ongoing research to figure out how to protect these incredible animals that have made it through 500 plus million years on the planet and that can use a lot of our help to keep them going another 500 million years more. With that, everyone, thanks for following us here on YouTube. We hope to see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thanks, everyone.